Well, we're, we're here today with, with Martin Dugiamis, who's uh, in Perth, and I'm in Sydney. And Martin, we really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to share with us today. And uh, I know that your experience will be of a lot of um, interest to people in, in this particular series. So thank you. Oh, absolute pleasure, Stephen. I uh, love having a chat with you. So I'm looking forward to this. Now, Martin, I, I know a little bit about your childhood, but not, not heaps. I know that um, the, the whole experience of remote learning was actually a reality for you well before the world of online learning. Perhaps you'd like to share with us a little bit about um, you know, what was that experience and what did you learn and possibly how did that impact your adult life? Yeah, uh, so my, I, I grew up in Central Australia because uh, my parents, who were um, a, a Greek and German um, immigrants who met in Australia, uh, when they got uh, married, the, the first job they had was to go and work in a, in a mining camp. Was, um, they lived out in Kalgoorlie, uh, and then they had this job to go out and build a town, essentially, on their own, just as a young couple. Uh, I was conceived out there and I, I, we, we lived out there in the bush uh, for until I was around 12 and uh, very isolated, um, sometimes in Aboriginal communities, sometimes not. And uh, schooling wasn't really easy to get to. So I was part of the Australia's School of the Air program, which is um, uh, quite famous, actually. I think um, yeah, Australia and Canada have these very old distance education programs that go back a uh, hundred years or so. Uh, at the beginning, of course, they were shipping bits of paper uh, around with horses and things. But uh, when I was doing it in, um, so this would be in the um, 70s and early 80s, uh, there was, uh, we had shortwave radio. So my, my teacher was a thousand kilometers away, about 650 miles or so uh, across a desert. Um, so it took about three days travel. And uh, we would talk over shortwave radio, bounce off the atmosphere and then down again for that long distance. And we had a huge antenna to pick it up. It was, you know, a serious bit of equipment. And uh, there's uh, a lot of, you know, uh, speaking and then saying over. And uh, the rest of my class was about six or seven kids spread out over this kind of a thousand, 2,000 kilometer um, diameter circle in the middle of Australia. And uh, it was one of the best things ever. I mean, it was amazing. We used to have these great conversations in the morning. Um, and then in, uh, for most of the day, I'd be working on uh, worksheets. Uh, they would be delivered every two weeks on an airplane. And we had a lot of sort of offline work. Uh, parents had to be quite involved. So parents were, you know, supervising and, and monitoring somewhat. But my, my parents were very busy working too. They it wasn't all the time. So I had to be very self-directed and uh, uh, the teachers had to be really good at connecting over this very narrow bandwidth thing. So I grew up with that. It was my reality and, uh, and it was very effective. Uh, when I did come back to the city, uh, I was uh, a year ahead of everybody there and I skipped a grade. I, went, I, I skipped grade seven and went straight into high school uh, because I, was, you know, I didn't really need to do it. So. And it's, it sounds an extremely interesting experience because although it's totally non-traditional, um, it sounds like you came out of that with a number of skills that you've been able to take forward. And in other words, that self-direction and the uh, the ability to know that you know that you, you've, you're taking responsibility for the pathway, and that that you know I think some of those things are amazing uh, lessons to learn. I, I would suspect that yeah. at the moment, all around the world, some kids are starting to experience that for themselves. You know, people who've actually had to rely on adults or teachers to push them are probably very gradually, without knowing it, learning some of those same lessons. I would say one of the best, and I'm anecdotally hearing this from some of uh, the people I work with who are telling me about their they and their kids at home, that uh, the single best thing is to get kids into reading. Um, you know, let them um, explore books uh, and you can get them digitally now everywhere um, and just started getting in that, into that world of books. There's so much to learn. And once you get the bug, I mean, when I was uh, 
I don't know, between the ages of around sort of six to, to 12, I read voraciously. I read everything. Like I just was reading all of the time. And uh, for me to get books back then, I had to rely on travelers coming through and, you know, giving me donated books. And, you know, occasionally we would visit Kalgoorlie and I would just like get as many books as I could. And I was reading every, you know, Time magazine and adult stuff. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, for adults, I mean, you know, like yeah. um, real real information i really hooked on um you know non-fiction stuff so i just was yeah learning a lot now we have the internet it's a lot easier so it shouldn't be too hard for kids to be getting yeah i mean it's interesting also we we can't physically travel but we can travel in our imaginations the books can take us anywhere yeah i mean it's it's an amazing thing. Yeah, I mean, your, your story there reminded me just as you were talking that I had one year of distance education. My, my father was a, uh, a university professor and we were going back to England, but it, we had this time between the worlds on a boat going from New Zealand to England um, over right. the Pacific and over the Atlantic. And uh, I don't know how we managed to do it, but I think I managed to get most of the year's correspondence distance work done on that trip because they, they would have given us all of the information before we left. And so it was then up to us just to do it and then post it back. But that mm. gave the most amazing opportunity. I know for me that having, having gone through that work really fast, I then had the, the year to explore castles and England. <laughs> yeah, right. Than, <laughs> And, and reading books, like you said, yeah, going through, yeah, so that there are a lot of benefits when we think about it. Okay, for let, me it was let's... a lot of for me it was a lot of science and science fiction too, actually, which yeah. uh, it really informed the rest of what I did after that, actually. Yeah, I mean, we, I guess for for you, you you're totally aware that uh, whilst you mightn't have had the same. Um, structure day to day as a school timetable might have provided but you were picking up on your literacy your numeracy your scientific knowledge and everything just spontaneously as it was passion in the room yeah which is a great reminder to say that we don't need to be worried about what's actually happening in the world right now provided kids are as you said reading well mm -hmm. let, let's fast forward you you, you are the founder of moodle or what, what was the motivation behind that uh, so I was, um, uh, I went to high school and, uh, and university. Uh, I did computer science. Uh, I was very, very much driven by science and, uh, and computers particularly. Um, uh, I had this sort of, you know, belief that, that the world we're seeing now, I was already kind of very well aware it was coming, even when I was uh, 17 or, or so, and really was just, the world of computers is very deep and very broad. And once you get into it, you know, it's a, it's addictive. My own 16 year old son has just got the bug and I'm just watching him like go deeper and deeper into this stuff. And it's, it's tremendous. Um, but I, I had a opportunity to cover for a university uh, computing center while they were off on a staff retreat for a week. And I had to support the entire university. And so I knew someone there and they said, oh, we've got a friend who can man the phones. Um, and so what I ended up doing for the week was supporting all the academics with random phone help desk type questions. And if I could, if I knew there was something I might have, I, could, I might be able to fix, I'd just go over there and fix it. And I loved the experience so much, I, I, I got into a full-time position there and I was supporting the university um, for years. And I had this kind of a, a roaming job. I was going around with every department, every level, one minute I'm with the vice chancellor, the next minute I'm with the cleaners or physics or nursing and getting to know everybody and, and particularly how they're engaging with technology and trying to solve problems. And I tried a lot of software with the academics, particularly to try and help them learn online and to uh, use the internet that was very new at that stage. Uh, we're talking like the very first browsers, Netscape 1.0. Yeah. And the tools around weren't cutting it. So that's when I started to build tools for them and use the, my computer science skills to build things. And um, over time, uh, I got more into it, started to study, uh, did a master's and then a PhD in the area to get more knowledge. And all of that work kind of became Moodle and became my full-time thing. So, yeah, fascinating story. 
I, I guess you're in, a, in an amazing position to sort of sit back and watch globally what's going on because we know Moodle has been taken up around the whole world in, a, in amazing ways. Um, perhaps we could focus for a little while on, on what, what are some of the things you're watching and what are some really helpful lessons or hints that educators who've been thrown in now in the deep end who, have, who haven't had the experience up until now. You know, if you had to think of, of um, what should they be thinking about right at this point, perhaps we could, we could look at those who've been thrown in immediately and then we could look at those who've perhaps been in for a while. So we'll look at those who've, who've just suddenly been put into the world of remote learning. So uh, just because people are um, studying online, uh, it doesn't mean their brains have changed substantially. They're the same people with the same uh, biology going on here. So, you know, the, the kind of things that work face to face also can work online. Um, what I am seeing, though, with people who are suddenly making the transition is that the first thing they think of, well, you know, I, as the person at the front of the room, need to keep being this person at the front of the room and they go straight for video like video is the most obvious direct replacement and video is good for that human connection uh it's it's good to i think and very initially it is good to um make that transition but uh what we know from uh this kind of thing is that learning is not necessarily very strong um, unless you're the kind of teacher who's really pushing your students and you know if you only have a few students in the class it's easier and, and you're making them all work hard in that session uh, making them think making them produce making them speak making them create things then in that situation this can work but if you've got a large class and you end up kind of defaulting to a lecture or you know almost a webinar kind of format uh, you'll lose students they'll tune out a lot of stuff will just go in one ear and out the other. Um, and, and we know uh, that, uh, you know, just watching videos, like, in, and you can ask someone, uh, okay, you've been watching a lot of Netflix recently, say, right? All, all week you've been watching TV shows and YouTube and stuff. What did you watch? And most people will struggle to remember even what they watched, let alone all the things they got out of it. Because if they aren't actively engaging they won't that you don't bed down that knowledge you don't create the knowledge in your in your mind you don't learn a lot you learn a bit but not a lot so the most effective things you can be doing are where you are creating the scenario for students to create things to express their their learning to give this create feedback loops where students are put into slightly beyond their comfort zone expressions of what they know and it's, and you get, and they get instant feedback. And so we've been doing this for years in, in Moodle, for example, uh, with many, many activities where you are getting students to create, to write things, to contribute to the, to a collaborative environment and to get feedback from not only the teacher, but all the, their peers as well. And that constant type feedback loop is what, works and it's the heart of social media it's what happens it's why social media works because you know you put out a tweet uh, about some idea you've had or some thought you are naturally very very keen to hear what everyone thinks about it right so you wake up the next morning oh you know how many likes did I get on that post and and it's that that, that need for the the feedback loop that that's when you're actually learning so we need to um, once we get past the video phase, start using the many, many tools that there are for working together, for collaborating together, for creating together, for you know, all of that stuff. And um, a lot of people in this field have been working on this for decades. Um, and, and a lot of, I, I'm just seeing on the social media, a lot of, a lot of them and a lot of us are going, wow, you know, suddenly it's all uh, Zoom or something um, and uh, we're forgetting all that stuff we already, we already knew. So that, that's the main thing I'd, I'd point out is to make your sessions collaborative, not only synchronous like this, but asynchronous and, you know, throughout the day.
So I guess, yeah, that gets us on to that next group, people who have been online for a while and have had far more experience and possibly even delivering completely online courses as a, as a career for themselves. What, what are you hearing from those people about what they're suggesting or le learning or hearing at the moment for people who've got a bit more um, sheer experience in the online world? Well, in, in, this, in this industry, there are, there's a whole... Um, there are professions, you know, sub professions, there are instructional designers um, who, who specialize in these things. There's various pedagogical experts. There's um, um, ed tech specialists who, you know, combining tech and uh, using it for education in many different ways. So I, I think um, that that's all been there. And, and a lot of institutions that have been online for a while, like the universities, are generally better at it have been into it for a while um they're already set up they're already ready to go uh what they what most of them are coping with is just an increase in in use but not substantially changing what they were doing uh, whereas i think probably the k-12 area while they may have had some online stuff going it wasn't a big focus and now they're it's quite quite a wrench to 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 get that all online so I would just say, um, you know, take it easy. Don't stress everybody with, about it. Don't dump every, don't expect the same pace initially. Um, give everybody time to adjust and, and think of little things, like little interactions. You know, um, well, I guess uh, that, that, a question sorry. of the day, a question yeah. of the day or something. Let, let's have, a, let's have a, a dilemma. I'm gonna throw a dilemma into a forum. And uh, I want us to argue about this dilemma, right? Whatever the topic is, and and get people discussing and talking online, you know. And those it's just facilitating those experiences. Um, they don't need to be big. You don't need to be saying, "Oh, you know, I need to start working on a a giant quiz to test everybody at the end of this year or the end of this semester." Um, do tiny assessments. Do a one percent grade assessment, a little activity. Um, and, and have constant engagement. So that's, the, that's my best advice. Okay, so that perhaps sort of two areas as we finish up. Um, I, I'm, I'm hearing from teachers of five and six year olds, people who are sort of, who would be, you know, what we call in Australia kindergarten teachers or, or um, reception teachers. They're actually struggling because so much of what they do uh, depends on that close interaction and relationship with the kids as they come in. Do you have any advice for those people who are, who are specifically in that zone? Well, I, I think if you can get them in, get to a video conferencing thing, it's pretty good for that age. Um, add, add some little homeworks, you know, little thing, go and draw a picture uh, about this topic, bring it back tomorrow and show us on video. Let's all talk about it together. But the, I've been involved in some uh, birthday parties over the past week or two and yeah. they've been surprisingly effective. You know, even with 20 or 30 people, we haven't, I haven't found everyone treading on each other's toes too much. Um, it takes a bit of time to adjust and to know when you can butt in and, you know, uh, people are holding things up to the camera um, to show each other. And uh, I, I find, uh, I think we can adjust, you know, it's, um, I mean, that's, take it easy. That's, 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 yeah, that's an interesting concept because there are, uh, you know, families who are making sure that those events, birthdays, and other ones are being are, are being continued. And I guess that, that it's that type of interaction and world which is actually more child oriented in the first place is not a bad place to then learn what you bring into the classroom. Yeah, so, so the la last little topic would be the issue of wellness. You know, as you've watched people in the online environment for many many years, what what's your advice to people who are feeling burnt out yeah i count myself lucky here I've, i fully trained myself to be you know very living in a computer being paperless actually for like the last 15 or more years um uh, so i realized my uh, i find it it's no problem for me but i i'm watching a lot of people um uh struggling to balance their different things in their life um, actually, my, my partner um, actually is 
gotten very busy because um, she, she teaches mindfulness to companies, to groups, to schools and universities. Is, um, so I think the, the important thing is to not get too carried away by what's on the screens. Um, you know, you, you need to internally have your own compass right you know get 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 that right you know you are a living being a, bio, a piece of biology and um you, you need to be uh focusing on your breath and these you know ancient techniques for meditation and mindfulness are especially important to just to be centered um when you're interacting through us we're looking at screens right now you know i've got a bunch of windows going on here um, they're all windows into worlds which, you know, like rabbit warrens that go on forever, right? You can get into, you could start reading the news uh, and I'm sure we're all reading the news a lot more lately and you can get very upset, very angry. Um, it doesn't help anything doing that. Um, so be, just be mindful of your, your diet, your information diet. Uh, be, make choices. Say, I'm, maybe I'm going to spend half an hour reading the news a day, max. Uh, or I'm going to spend half an hour worrying a day, max. Uh, and then that's it. I've worried enough. Like worrying anymore is not going to help anything. So I'll stop worrying and I'll do something else. So I, I find this that kind of mental discipline to divide up your day and, and, and how much you're going to do on what. You know, um, get a bit of a schedule going so that you're, you're interacting with your family better not trying to juggle meetings over helping kids with schoolwork and other things. Um, it takes some practice, of course, and it's not easy, but it's something we literally have to work out on our own right now. Yeah, no, that's totally, totally the case. We're, we're, we're in a context where we all have to take responsibility and recognise how we're feeling and take the actions necessary to make sure that we're keeping ourselves balanced because uh, we, 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 we simply aren't in our normal circles going through. No. Look, Pat, thank you very much for taking the time today. Um, I'm, I'm sure that there'll be plenty of um, thoughts and takeaways from what you've said that people can think through. And uh, I think with all of these circumstances, we're all still learning and we can all learn from each other. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Really appreciate and enjoy the chat, chance to chat with you. Um, I hope everyone's take care of themselves and people around them and uh, we'll all get through this. And I, I feel very confident, actually, that uh, the, the world can be a really a better place after this. I, I really like the fact we've all had a bit of a chance to just take a step back from the, the crazy headlong rush of um, globalization and technology we've all been experiencing to sit back um, take stock of ourselves as a species. Uh, so I, I think it's, there's a good, good things out of this.